Hey everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. With the coming of Christopher Nolan's debut biopic, Oppenheimer, out July 21st, 2023, I wanted to make a podcast talking about the true story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the theoretical physicist the movie is focusing on. He was the director at the Los Alamos Labs during the Manhattan Project, which led to the creation of the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer is often referred to as the father of the atomic bomb. He was a brilliant scientist with a brilliant mind whose soul was existentially tortured by what he had created, never forgiving himself and driving him down a dark path in the years after World War II. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This is a quote Oppenheimer repurposed to describe being the creator of the atomic bomb. Reading it on paper can be deceiving because it sounds like a cool supervillain quote, but in reality, Oppenheimer in no way was trying to be cool or memorable. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. See, once you hear it coming from him, it really changes from a cool quote to a haunting, soul-wrenching comment, knowing he may well be the man responsible for the destruction of humanity. There's an interesting YouTube video by the channel The Art of Deduction analyzing the body language of Oppenheimer while he's saying this quote, and it mimics the regretful, haunting tone of his voice. The video says, almost as if his whole body, every muscle in his face, is heavier than it is normally. As if the subjective weight of the memory itself is adding to the force of gravity. This is interesting because all of the other footage of Oppenheimer in that time, for the most part, is very animated and happy. So his actions are clearly representing the way he truly feels about the matter. His life certainly is an interesting story. Tragic, but interesting. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was born on April 22, 1904, in New York. His father, also Julius Oppenheimer, was a German immigrant who worked in his family's textile importing business. His mother, Ella Friedman, was a painter whose family had been in New York for generations. His younger brother, Frank, would also become a physicist. In 1921, Oppenheimer graduated high school at the top of his class. He later went on to attend Harvard, where he studied mathematics, science, philosophy, Eastern religion, and French and English literature. During a course on thermodynamics, Oppenheimer was introduced to experimental physics. Oppenheimer knew right away that physics is what he wanted to focus his entire life on. So in 1925, when he graduated Harvard, he went to Cambridge University's Cavendish Laboratory as a research assistant to J.J. Thompson, who is famously credited with discovering the electron. Oppenheimer then realized he wasn't cut out for the routine laboratory work, so he went on to study quantum physics. In 1927, Oppenheimer received his doctorate. At this time, and in the subsequent 12 or 13 years, he would travel from one great center of physics to another, doing work for all of them. Oppenheimer became credited with being a founding father of the American School of Theoretical Physics. Also, an interesting fact, in the 1930s, he was the first to write papers suggesting the existence of black holes. He was truly an incredible man at the time. So, fast forward to 1941, as the intensity of World War II was rising, the bombing of Pearl Harbor changed the lives and work of American physicists in a very drastic way. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a surprise Japanese military strike on the United States, in Honolulu, Hawaii. It was a very devastating event, killing just over 2,400 people. For reference, 9-11 killed just over 2,900. So to the States, this was a massive loss. Just a few years before this, in 1938, nuclear fission was discovered by a few German scientists. With this discovery, a few Hungarian scientists, with the support of Albert Einstein, convinced U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt that this discovery had the potential to create a massive nuclear bomb. So once the bombing of Pearl Harbor had occurred, Roosevelt quickly amped up the study of nuclear bombs, and physicists' work quickly transitioned into the patriotic effort of winning the war. In June of 1942, Oppenheimer was appointed as the scientific director of the Manhattan Project. The project involved several laboratories in secret locations across the country, including the University of Chicago, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and most famously, Los Alamos in New Mexico. Oppenheimer oversaw the construction of the Los Alamos Laboratory, where he gathered the best minds in physics to work on the problem of creating an atomic bomb. At the time, Oppenheimer was extremely industrious and passionate about creating the bomb. Even before he was appointed, 
he was personally pursuing the job and research. Three years later, in 1945, the scientists at Los Alamos created two designs for the bomb, famously named Little Boy and Fat Man. Little Boy did not require testing, but Fat Man did. They tested the bomb in Alamogoro, New Mexico on July 14, 1945. The explosion cloud was massive, hitting 38,000 feet high. For reference, airplanes fly between 33 and 42,000 feet. People cheered and celebrated the success, but not Oppenheimer. This is where his deep regret started. I like to imagine this moment is where the quote impacts him the most. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The bombs were complete and out of Oppenheimer's hands. On August 6th, 1945, the U.S. made the decision to drop Little Boy on Hiroshima and Fat Man on Nagasaki three days later. The two bombs killed between 120 and 226,000 people. Most were civilians. This remains to be the only military use of nuclear weapons to date. So, imagine being the man responsible for this. Imagine having to live knowing you created the weapon that killed that many people as well as created the weapon that could potentially be the end of humanity in the future. A patriotic duty to the USA, but a haunting devastation to humanity. In the years after World War II, Oppenheimer knew that he could not stop the progress of nuclear power. So he worked to educate on the dangers of it, and to hopefully not let it get out of hand. In 1949, during the Cold War, the Russians were found testing nuclear bombs, which shocked the United States. They assumed the Russians were far further behind them in this front. The U.S. came to the conclusion that someone must have shared their secrets with the Russian to allow them to progress at the speed that they did. Oppenheimer was put under immediate suspicion due to his previous ties to the Communist Party. Before accepting his position on the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer had supported the Communist Party in the United States, though he never became an official member. Regardless of everything that he did for the United States, His previous political stance was never forgotten by his superiors. To retaliate to the Russian progress, the U.S. wanted to create a new, more destructive bomb, the hydrogen bomb. This bomb would be 1,000 times larger than the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer opposed this strongly. He feared it would be a progression into our demise as a species. The U.S. obviously ignored this and made it anyways. In 1953, due to the suspicions, Oppenheimer was denied security clearance and lost his position with the AEC, which was an agency to control the development and production of nuclear weapons and to make sure peaceful progress was made in nuclear science. It was pretty obvious his termination was because of his strong opposition to the creation of the hydrogen bomb, not due to the communist ties like they all said. All the doors that had formerly been opened to him were closed. He was ousted. After this, Oppenheimer was again a changed person. His previous spirit and liveliness had left him, recalled a colleague. He was humiliated by the nation he so greatly served. To quote Christopher Nolan, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. J. Robert Oppenheimer died February 18th, 1967 from throat cancer. While I was reading about Oppenheimer, I was really consumed by a few questions I kept repeating to myself over and over again, not really knowing how to feel about the situation. So when I ask these questions, I'm talking more about humanity and our species on this planet, not on the success in winning a war of humans fighting other humans, which is ridiculous. So my first question is, were the lives that were lost due to the dropping of the atomic bombs a necessary sacrifice to potentially prevent millions and millions of future lives being lost to the war. My second question is, Oppenheimer's regretful, sad, haunted soul doesn't change the fact that he created the bomb in the first place. So should we feel sympathy for him? I can't wait for Christopher Nolan's take on this story and I can't wait to come back to this podcast after watching the film and seeing how Nolan adapted this story in his own personalized, uh, genius, creative way. Okay, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed episode three of Creations at Midnight and stay tuned for more episodes to come.